ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 61st episode of VisionCon Live, your go-to nerdy talk show. I'm your host, Zach Wilson, but you can come here to see me today. You can to meet the man of the hour. He's Mob from Mob Psycho 100, Narancia from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Rio from Devilman Cry Baby, just to name a few. It takes a true legendary actor to play such legendary characters. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome the one, the only, Kyle McCarley. Kyle, how are we doing today? I'm, I, I cannot possibly live up to that introduction. Thank you so oh. much. I, I appreciate that. I'm doing fine. I've had, <laughs> I've had a lot of practice. I'll just take it with that. I never, <laughs> I never fill anybody with sycophancies. It's always genuine. <laughs> Which, if we're talking genuine, real quick, and guys, this isn't, this isn't a branded video or anything, but I just would like to give a quick spotlight to my new love in the world. That, of course, would be the Lady Gaga Oreos. <laughs> you, cannot, you cannot see that on the chat, no. They are, oh my god, I mean, it took me, I had to go to four different Walmarts to get them, but they are the best things I've ever eaten. Yeah? Yeah, it tastes, it tastes like, you know those sugar, like, uh, what is it, icing sugar cookies that they sell at yeah like? yeah yeah they taste exactly like that oh but they're great. oreos okay yeah, but they're oreos see it's, it's the perfect combination <laughs> but uh i don't know all right i, I saw them out of the corner of my eye and i was like you know what i'm gonna show these but <laughs> uh lady gaga oreos aside uh we got a lot to talk about guys uh so i wanted to start us off with kyle you're a titan yes. in the industry a lot of characters not all of which we'll have time to get to but i wanted to get into three in specific but before okay. we did that I wanted to start to where it all began. Was show business always the plan? Or did something happen later on in life that kind of brought us to where we are today? Uh, so, yeah, when I was, I mean, when I was a kid, I wanted to be everything. But, uh, but always on the, you know, when you're a kid, you're like, I want to be a firefighter and an astronaut. And yeah, I wanted, it's, so, but in addition to all those other things, I think I wanted to be a major league baseball player at one point. I don't even like baseball now. But, uh, <laughs> always on the list was actor. I wanted to be an actor. Um, but my idea of being an actor, I wanted to be in the movies and on, on TV. I wanted to be a household name and, and you know, whatever, whatever that, that means. Uh, uh, so I, I, I did a lot of theater growing up. And as I, and as I got older, you know, all the other aspirations fell off the list, but actor always stayed. So that was always something I wanted to do. Um, and then as I, as I grew up doing a lot of theater in high school, a lot of musical theater, I came to Los Angeles to go to school and study acting at the University of Southern California. Uh, and always with the objective of, you know, moving from there into being on camera. Sure. And, uh, uh, I spent about a year after I had graduated from USC not really trying all that hard to be an actor, but still calling myself an actor. Okay. Uh, uh, and I finally realized about a year later that I, I, I was like, you know, I've kind of lost my passion for this somewhere along the line. Uh, but while I was going to school, I got really into World of Warcraft Hell yeah! And uh, and uh, I I got involved with a fan site about WoW called WoW Radio. It was a podcasting network, except it was live podcasting. It was called Shoutcasting back when that was a thing through Winamp. Um, uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, so got into that, and and when I got into that, I was uh, maybe a month into playing WoW, and me and all of my buddies from high school got, got into it and, and found this, this podcasting network and they were looking for new show hosts. And one of my friends was like, guys, we should host a, a talk show about WoW. And I was like, we've been playing this game for less than a month. <laughs> we don't know what, we would not know what we're talking about. But all of us were theater kids, so I suggested that we do a radio play. Uh, and we, we, so we started doing that and they liked it. They or liked it enough to, to let us keep doing it. Um, and, uh, and eventually started doing talk shows and other stuff about WoW. And then not so much related to WoW, but whatever. So the radio play was something that I did while I was in college. And a year after college, when I was floundering around, not really knowing what I was doing with my life anymore, I went, that radio play was a lot of fun. 
I should take a class in voiceover and see what that's all about. So I did, and I fell in love, and I just went headlong into that, and I've been doing that ever since. The rest is history. Yeah. <laughs> um, shout out to WOW. Yeah, right? <laughs> Where it all began. Well, like I put up top, a bunch of characters you've voiced throughout the years, three of which I want to talk about, and the first one is very near and dear to my heart. I love him to death. A lot of people already know who this character is, but for, without further ado, I want to talk about the one, the only... Shigeo, a.k.a. Mob, from Mob Psycho 100. So, uh. <laughs> so before we dive deep, just real quick, give us a brief overview of the character, maybe fun anecdotes involved with getting the part, anything at all. Uh, so, okay. Um, I, well, one, one fun little anecdote is when we started the, working on this show, uh, I had, I, had, I had auditioned for, I think I read for four different characters. I read for Mob and Ritsu, uh, his brother, who's played by Max Middleman. Um, um, Teru, uh, the kind of rival in like episode four, I want to say, from the first season. And then he kind of becomes a, a sidekick later on. That's, he's voiced by Eric Kimmerer. And I also read for Regan, uh, which is my it, mob's master voiced by Chris Neosi. Um, uh, anyway, after auditions and, and booking the role and my first session, we, we listened to my audition for reference and we kind of set the character's voice based off of that, which is kind of standard fare where we, you know, you, you listen to the audition, you repeat a little bit and maybe they make a couple minor tweaks to the audition. Sometimes they make major tweaks to the audition. In this case, I think we stuck pretty close to what I did in the audition and uh, uh, started, started recording the, the show from there. And I think we had, uh, gosh, this was so long ago. I think it was like a four hour session to start things off, um, <clears throat> which is pretty typical. And we got through, I would guess the first episode or two maybe if that uh i, I don't know it's 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 hard to say it, it kind of varies depending on the show and i don't remember specifically but i do remember at a later session two three four sessions later we're working on episode five or six or something like that and we load up the the reference audio which is stuff that was recorded in our very first session uh and and hit play and Chris Kaysen is our director. And throughout every session, uh, he keeps making, he keeps giving me the note of, I, I think it'll be funnier if it's a little bit higher pitched than, than where <laughs> we're at right now. Uh, so we played, anyway, we're, we're in episode five or six or something at the, at the start of this session. And we play reference from episode one. And Chris stops for a second and he goes, is that, is that really where his voice sat in that episode? And we go and we load up the episode and we start playing some of it. And he went, wow, okay, go back to where we're at now and get, and let's play some stuff just from where we left off. And it's like, it's, it's gone up like half an octave at this point from the first episode forward to, to about halfway through the first season. And he was like, oh, wow. Well, nobody told me that we need to change it. So we're just going to leave it where it is. No. Uh, so we just kept going from there. Um, but it's, it, it's, if you, if you watch the first, you probably won't notice it all that much if you're watching everything sequentially, but if you have just watched something later on in the series and go back to the first episode, it's a very noticeable shift how much the voice changes over, over time. Um, I know what I'm I, it, really going to do after this. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, I, uh, I, I didn't have the thought in my brain, but but Chris Kaysen keeps kept on uh, uh, making the making Michael Jackson jokes about my my mob voice, which not intentional at all, and not ever in my brain while I'm doing it. But that's that's what he thinks it sounds like. Kind of where it landed. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing I love so much about Mob, you know, among other things, obviously, is the fact he's not your typical anime protagonist. And, you know, I feel like in a lot of ways that helps him. He's very complex, yet also simple at the same time. He's very sweet, yet tries to curtail 
and kind of keep in check the awesome psychic powers that he's been bestowed. But, you know, with this incre- playing this incredible and a compelling character, was there ever a point where you may have started to relate to Mob on a personal level, maybe good or bad? Oh, early, early on. Um, it, it, it's, Shigeo has, has that, that childhood innocence that is, uh, I, I mean, maybe it's not, it's not readily available in your, in your memory, um, in your day-to-day life, but, but it's pretty easy to remember a time when you were a kid and everybody was great and everything was great. And, you know, just that implicit trust that he has in all other people, uh, un, you know, until, until the, sure. until the, the glass shatters with, with any given villain or something. But uh, he's, he's just, he's so, he's such a cinnamon roll. He's such a sweetheart <laughs> that is, that he's just, he's just so, uh, uh, I don't know. It's, it's that, that innocence is, is, so easy to 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 tap into and 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 relate to i i don't know why that is uh because i don't feel like i am that way in my day-to-day life necessarily but there was a time when i might have been there you go mobs (laughs) who we wish we still were right yeah exactly (laughs) well kind of jumping ship to a much uh different character in that regard now okay I've, as I've voiced before, ladies and gentlemen, I'm royally late to the JoJo train. I don't know if JoJo train's a thing, but I'm going to coin it. <laughs> but w- I'm here now, guys, and I see it. I see it. So I want to talk about one of the most beloved characters in the series. Well, let's talk about Narancia. Now, like we did beforehand, just give us a brief overview of the character, fun anecdotes involved, anything at all. Oh, gosh. Uh... Yeah, I. T- to be completely honest, I am not a JoJo fan. Woo! Uh, I, I yeah, I know. It's 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 and it's not anything against the show. It's just I've never gotten into it. I I don't. I I have not watched uh, much of it at all, really. Uh, outside of outside of stuff that that I see in the booth or saw in the booth. I mean, my my time on the show. Not spoiler alert, but my time on the show is over. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but Naracha is a fun character. He's 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 a he's a hothead, and um, I I think honestly I think the most memorable scene for me is is his like, kind of the our intro to the character when he's trying to do math and failing absolutely miserably. Uh, I I I find great joy in in how he he successfully does a little bit of the math. And then we cut away from him, and when he comes back, he's gotten it so so much worse. And it, I, I enjoy that a lot. Um, and I will say also, we we got to, so for people who are big JoJo fans, they'll they'll know that uh, uh, there are a, there are a lot of references to classic rock bands, artists, songs throughout that entire series, uh, and most of them in the dub have to be adapted out because otherwise we get into trouble with copyright infringement. Oh. Um, so in the, uh, in the original manga, and I think in the Japanese uh, uh, subtitled version of the, of the show, well, maybe not, maybe not in the English subtitles, but in the Japanese, in sure. the original Japanese, I think, uh, Narancha's stand is that, that little airplane that flies around and, and does his bidding is called Aerosmith. <laughs> um, and uh, we didn't know at first what the dub name was, but uh, Tony Oliver, who, who directs the show, was like, I hope it's something witty like, like Plain Right or something like that, so that it's, you know, sure. Aerosmith, Plain Right. So, no, but it's Lil Bomber. Lil Bomber is, is the name of his stand in the, uh, in the English. It's cute, not quite as clever, but it's cute. Yeah, right. <laughs> they do they do get punny with them sometimes, but sure. uh, yeah. Well, you you said it out of your own mouth. It, he's quite the hothead. So oh, yeah. you know, transitioning into that as his voice actor, and maybe not limiting it to just him, but any character that is more of a hothead and requires more intense recording sessions. When you know in advance that you are going into a more intense dexterous recording session compared to the usual ones 
Is there anything you do to prepare, anything you do throughout to make sure your voice stays well? And then at the end, is there anything you do to recover? Yeah, uh, Naracha wasn't too bad for me for, for some unknown reason, really, because he is in a placement in my vocal range that is higher and harder to hit sometimes. I don't know, this might've been, this might've been Tony just being an expert director and making sure that I was scheduled at times of the day and times of the week when my voice would be awake and fresh. Uh, and he's also just really, he's, he's really efficient as a director, meaning he doesn't spend a whole lot of time going, ah, that could be five or 10% better than it is right now. He'll, he'll kind of just, he'll do that Clint Eastwood thing where it's just like, no, we got it, we're moving on, it's good. <laughs> Uh, so that might have been part of what preserved it. Um, but uh, in terms of vocally stressful sessions, they're, they're a thing, and I don't know if I, I would say that they're unusual. They're very common, um, uh, especially in video games, uh, but also in anime uh, a, li a little bit, depending on the character. Uh, and uh, there's avoiding early morning sessions, at least for me. I'm not very awake in the mornings that helps. So if, if they can schedule me a little later in the day, especially if it's a character that's, that's in the, my upper register or, or a character that's going to do a lot of shouting, it helps if it's later in the day. It also helps if it's later in the week, if it's, uh, if it's going to be something really, really shouty, really, really strenuous. Uh, if, if it can be scheduled on a Friday, then I can have a couple days to recover before I get back to work on Monday instead of, you know, bright and early Monday morning, I do all the shouting and screaming, and then I'm exhausted for my afternoon, Monday afternoon session or, or the session on Tuesday or, or whatever. Um, so that, that helps in terms of scheduling. Drink lots of water. Make sure that the instrument is nice and loose at all times. We kind of have, as, as humans, we have this tendency to, when we start getting uh, tense from, from like emotional tenseness or whatever we all of our muscles start to tense up and if you're if your vocal cords if the muscles in here start to get tight everything starts to get tired faster so you got to just have to you have to be mindful to try and stay loose while you're in the booth and and make sure that this all stays loose so that it doesn't get worn out really fast um lots and lots of fluids. There are tricks you can do to, to try and kind of power through particularly difficult sessions. There's a, there's a Chinese throat syrup called, I'm gonna butcher the pronunciation, but it's called Ninjam Pei Pa Kwa. Kwa. Uh, uh, we call it Fred Tatashore's Hulk juice. Um, <laughs> but, uh, cause <laughs> he kind of introduced it to the VO community. Um, but uh, <laughs> uh, it's it's basically this this really thick syrupy stuff that there are different ways to use it. I like to dissolve it in hot water and drink it like tea. Um, that helps as it's kind of like a band aid fix. It's not something that's going to really help. The only thing that can help if your if your voice starts to get tired is rest. Um, but that can that can give you kind of a band aid fix to just power through. Uh, a particularly difficult session before you get to the part where you can rest, basically. That's a couple couple little tricks. Well, syrup is interesting because we've had plenty of other guests who've recommended that to the point that I'm about ready just to contact them and maybe see if we can squeeze a sponsorship deal out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, so before we move on, guys, since we're about at the halfway point, I did want to reiterate, fans of the show already know this and have already done this. Plenty of you have already messaged VisionCon directly or put in the live chat your viewers' comments and questions. You still have plenty of time to do so, but if you're new to the show, first off, welcome. But also, you have plenty of time to do that, and that is available to you. We will get to those at the very end, guys. And with that, we're gonna go to our final character that I wanted to talk about. Now, we all know Netflix is killing it with both getting classic animes onto the site while also creating some great Netflix original animes. The one I wanna talk about, if, if we, uh, if we have some kiddos in the, uh, in the audience tonight, I would not recommend you check this out. Maybe- uh, No, don't go watch this show. <laughs> wait, wait a little <laughs> bit until you check this one out. But it's wonderful nonetheless, as long as you fit the age bracket. But I want to talk about Devilman Crybaby. Specifically, I want to talk about Rio. All right, so before, <laughs> like, we, like we've done, just a brief overview of the character, any fun anecdotes involved, anything at all. 
Yeah, uh, I got a real fun anecdote about this one. So, Go for it. Um, I can't remember what the timing was, but I know I had, I, I booked this job uh, in the middle of a couple of convention appearances. I had a really busy couple of weeks or, or months or something where, um, where I was going to be out of town a lot. Uh, and um, Netflix in particular is is very tight with their their deadlines so the recording window is pretty narrow uh so when they scheduled me to to record for devil man cry baby we did the first i think it was the first half of the show uh all in one eight hour day which is really really unusual uh, t typically a recording session is is two to four hours somewhere in there and then and then you leave and maybe you go to another recording session somewhere else in town or something like that but that's that's the end of your your recording schedule for this one i had four hours an hour off for lunch and then another four hours the same day um and it was the very first day of recording on the show so nobody had done any recording on this yet and I don't want to throw anybody under the bus, but the, the summary I got about the character at the beginning of the session, probably a few generic characteristics, but, uh, but the word that, that stuck out in my mind was that he is one of the protagonists of the show. <laughs> and I got really confused when we got to the end of episode one because some stuff happens, no spoilers, that doesn't really seem like the actions of a protagonist. And, uh, and I, think I, had to, I think I had to switch rooms because the, the, they needed, this was, this was recorded at, uh, at, at uh, SDI Media in, in Los Angeles where they have two recording booths and a director in each and an engineer in each. And, and I don't know, for whatever reason, the room I, was, I started the day in was needed for something else. So I moved to the other room with the other director and engineer. Uh, and I started asking questions about, wait a second. So he's one of the good guys. Is that right? This seems really strange to me. And, and I eventually, I got on my phone and looked up on Wikipedia and got an actual character summary. And I went, oh, oh, he's literally, spoiler. <laughs> uh, that explains a lot. Okay, now we're on the same page. I'm ready to keep going now. <laughs> I mean, they definitely threw you for a curveball by saying pro Sure <laughs> did. Yeah. <laughs> well, and like the thing that makes Devilman Cry Baby, Devilman Cry Baby rather, uh, so compelling and one of Netflix's most popular animes on there is its compelling and diverse characters. But so when you, and I feel like I could answer this question, but going into it, when you were cast as the main lead, you know, protagonist, antagonist, we'll, right. leave, that, we'll leave that <laughs> yeah. up to you. Um, did you know going in or had any idea that it would get to be as popular as it is? I did not. I didn't even know about the, about the old dub from the 70s, 80s, whenever that was, uh, at the time of recording. Now it's one of my favorite examples of anime, uh, at least what not to do um it's so much fun to to watch <laughs> that have you seen that dub the oh. original oh dub? the original no 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 oh should i go back do your do yourself a favor and at least just google some clips okay so after after i do the mob thing it's, go back yeah to yeah to check it's out astounding mob. it's okay. astounding um yeah yeah uh, but no, I didn't know anything about Devil Man going into it, which is pretty typical for me. Actually, uh, another anecdote about Mob, if we can, if we can go backwards oh, yeah. in time. Oh, always about. Um, I uh, so that was one where I actually did know a little bit going in um, before I recorded the audition. This is a little bit earlier in my career, uh, and I had not up to this point done this, but I decided, you know what? This show looks really cool. It looks like another One Punch Man. And honestly, it's, I, I know I'm biased, but I think it's better than One Punch Man, at least in some ways. It's, di it's different. It's different. But We're in agreement. Uh, but anyway, um, I, I was like, I really want to be on this show. 
So uh, I decided I was going to do a little research and I went and watched the first episode subtitled before I recorded my auditions. Uh, and it worked out really well. And, and, I, and I, I got lucky and I, and I booked Mob. And I was like, awesome, new strategy. That's my plan. When I have the time, I'm going to watch the first episode before I, before I record the audition. Um, and then also for Mob, I, I watched the whole show subtitled before I got into recording. So I knew it really well. Not yeah. always an option. Obviously not an option with a, with a Netflix show because those are usually uh, simul releases. But um, so flash forward a little bit. I think the next... Next audition that came around for me was uh, on Ohana, um, which I was like, oh, this looks so great. It looks like another Your Lion April, which I had the privilege of working on. And it was so much fun. And, um, and it was directed by Patrick Seitz again. So I was like, ah, I want to work on this. this. This looks so cool. So I watched the first episode and I, I auditioned for two characters. I got callbacks for both of them and I didn't book either one. Yeah. And it hurt and i went oh, okay that's why you don't get yourself attached to a show before you read for it <laughs> so i don't do that anymore <laughs> i mean it was it was a good in theory yeah yeah it's good until it doesn't work and then until you go oh work. i don't like that that doesn't feel good <laughs> <laughs> well we're gonna jump ship a little bit from characters you voiced to something that you do a lot of the other times when you're not voicing characters now, I will, I'm going to preface this by telling you what I've told previous guests so, that have had Twitch accounts. Now, I forget, it escapes me, what, who was our first guest that wanted to advertise their Twitch account? But I do remember, and I'll tell you the same thing I told them, that my first instinct when they told me that was internally, I thought, okay, I mean, who doesn't have a Twitch account nowadays? <laughs> however, <laughs> however. I don't know what it is, but I mean, long story short, as with many things, I was wrong. Because I don't know what it is about you voice actors that have Twitch, but you guys just fucking get it. You guys <laughs> just know how to engage with an audience while also providing very entertaining content simultaneously. So I want to take you. <laughs> I wanted to take a minute to talk about your, oh, let me pull it up actually real quick. Um, I wanted to talk take a minute to talk a little bit about your twitch account if sure. i pull it up real quick i knew i was forgetting something nope and oh here it is okay and then the full screen this bad boy for our audio listeners i know you don't know what i'm doing i'm trying to click on the screen <laughs> here it is okay all right. Oh, there we are. Okay. There it is. There it is. That's my Twitch channel. So just tell the folks watching at home right now and listening at home on Spotify all about Twitch, kind of how you got into it, and if they decide to follow you and or so even subscribe to you, what kind of content can they expect? Yeah. Uh, so my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Kyle McCarley. Uh, if you're looking at this video, you're, you're looking at it right now. Um, I, uh, I got into Twitch during when when near automata came out uh gosh that was over four years ago now oh, I, hate I think it. I hate by, that. I hate that I th that yeah cool. i know it's it's hard to imagine that 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 that's what happened but um i i did not expect to still be streaming <laughs> four years later when when i when i got into it it was just kind of like a hey this might be fun for me to get on and stream a little bit of a game that i'm in especially a game that i'm I'm a major character in because it was, it was, you know, t at least to that point in my career, probably the biggest thing that I had worked on. And, um, and it's, it's still the thing that I think I'm most recognized for that game. So I, I thought this might be fun for, for fans of this game to see somebody who's in it, uh, uh playing in it. And it, I instantly, um, just kind of jived with, Oh, this is really cool being able to interact with fans in real time like this without having to travel the world and go to conventions and stuff. Uh, so I started, uh, I, I started streaming more stuff. I, I went all through the entirety of near automata and I didn't even know I was going to finish that playthrough when I got started. And since that time I've played through a bunch of games that I have had the privilege of working on. Uh, right now my weekly schedule is, Thursday nights, Friday nights at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time or 9.30 p.m. 
Central. Uh, uh, and on Thursdays, it's just that that was something that started during pandemic. Me and some buddies of mine from high school and college years just playing multiplayer video games together. We call it the Quarren Stream. Um, uh, on Friday nights, a show that we started doing a little, gosh, year and a half ago now, I think. Uh, we call it the Board and Barrel. It's a tavern themed board gaming show because uh, I'm a big fan of board games. So uh, that's every Friday night at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time. It's my, it's my creative baby. Um, we've, we've started bringing guests on to, to play board games with us. It's a very interactive broadcast. We have house rules that the fans can influence, the viewers can influence live while we're playing. They can either help us or hurt us, depending on how they feel. Uh, we, have, uh, we have virtual bingo cards that they can fill out while they're watching the show, and we're always keeping close tabs on the chat. Uh, and then on, on Saturdays at noon Pacific time or 2 o'clock Central, uh, I play games pertaining to my voiceover career. And right now, starting next Saturday, that's going to be Monster Hunter Rise. Heck I'm yeah. Gonna, I'm, starting that when it comes out so All right, but i've played i've played through fire emblem echoes i've played through astral chain uh i've played through 13 sentinels and god eater 3 uh uh now i've played through near automata the original near and dragon guard 3 um i'm gonna play through the new near when it comes out the the, the remaster uh so and all of those those VODs are still available on that Twitch channel, too, if you want to go back and watch old stuff. A little bit for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, and I've got that link as well as many others in the live chat. If you watch this live on Facebook or if you watch this later on YouTube, it's going to be down in the description box below. And before we get out of here, boop, there you go. Oh, thanks. <laughs> all right, again, let me uh, stop the share, screen share. Okay, guys. All right, guys. Well, with that, speaking of those links, both in the live chat, if you're watching this live on Facebook, or if you're watching it later on YouTube, down there in the description box below, speaking of them, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't already, message VisionCon directly, your viewers' comments and questions, or put it in the live chat. It's your last chance to do so, because, ladies and gentlemen, we're in the plug zone. Kyle McCarley, now is your opportunity to plug, promote, advertise, whatever verb you want to use, anything you want. The floor is yours, sir. Okay, uh, so, well, for, for starters, you can hear me in Cells at Work Code Black, now streaming on Funimation. Uh, we've been working on that for the past month or two or something like that, and, and it is, it's, it's a simul dub. It's one of those crazy new scheduled things where we're recording it rapid fire as it's happening. Uh, so that's, that's available. Uh, oh, and you're, you're pulling up my, my autograph section on my website. Yes, you can, you can order autograph prints from me at kylemccarley.com slash autographs. Uh, Ichimatsu is featured right there. He is from Mr. Osamatsu. The English dub is finally available for you to consume. Uh, it is available on Blu-ray, and I think it's also available streaming through like iTunes and, and Amazon and, and some other places. I don't think it's included with any streaming services as of yet, but it's very, very funny. And I hope you'll check that one out. Uh, also just released a couple of days ago, a very cool, very weird show that is on Apple TV plus called calls. Uh, that's got a, it's, it's, it's got a crazy celebrity cast and also for some reason me. Um, uh, I got to do a short scene at the end of episode two, uh, reading with Aaron Taylor Johnson from this very room. Um, I, I listened to him acting with Riley Keough, or Keough, I don't know how to pronounce her last name, and, uh, and Ben Schwartz and Jennifer Tilly all day. And then I got to, to chime in and do a little part at the end of the day. It's, uh, it was a crazy experience. The show is a crazy experience. It's basically like a twilight, a visualized radio play Twilight Zone is how I would describe calls. Ooh. You can check that out on Apple TV Plus. Uh, I think for free. I'm not sure if it's entirely free or if it's just, I don't know, maybe, maybe it was just we signed up for a seven-day trial. I'm not sure, but we started <laughs> watching it yesterday. It's cool. Check it out.
Oh, yeah. Well, and I got those links plus many others in the live chat. If you watch us live on Facebook or watch it later on YouTube, down in the description box below. And with that, I'm going out of the plug zone and going to the final segment, viewers' comments and questions. So like I always do, guys, going to split it halfway between the Messenger and the live chat. So let me pull that up real quick. Okay. So Raylene tuned in and said, what was some of your favorite lines to voice as Psyche K? As Psyche K? Oh, man. Oh, it's hard for me to remember any specific lines, but that was a really cool show to work on. Um, I, it's... This is this is a really selfish, nerdy voice actor uh, uh, comment to make about Psyche K, but um, I, I I've done a lot of anime. I've done a lot of dubbing, not only anime but also live action dubs, and uh, that was the first time I ever got to play a lead character whose mouth never moves. Uh, so all of his dialogue is completely tele telepathic. Uh, so it was really, really cool to not have to worry about lip flaps. <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, it's, it's a very funny show. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and it was cool coming into that. I did not see more than just the first episode of the, of the first season because we came in to dub just the Netflix show, uh, uh, Psyche K Reawakened, I think is the full title. It's like the third season. And, and the second season never got a dub. So I don't know if that'll ever happen. It's probably lingering somewhere in Wright's limbo or something. Yeah. But uh, but it was cool to come in and, and play with with that with that series. It was a lot of fun. It was very very funny. Well, in a similar vein, uh, Nikki tuned in and said, "What was your favorite part about voicing Rio, and what was your favorite part of the show?" So Devilman Crybaby. Mm, yeah, my favorite part of the show of of Devilman Crybaby. Uh, I think I would have to go with the the conclusion of of the show and i don't want to give any spoilers uh but that whole that whole sequence and and kind of revealing who rio really is uh was was interesting it was it was cool to be able to do something very very different uh from from what i you know from what somebody like me usually gets to gets to do i don't want to get into spoiler territory but that was that was fun that was cool well, jumping in the live chat, uh, Rex tuned in and said, hey, Kyle, have you auditioned for Ichimatsu exclusively on Mr. Ozomatsu, or did you audition for all six brothers? I auditioned for five out of the six brothers, and I will tell you why I did not read for Osamatsu, and it's a really dumb reason. It's because the sides were not complete. Uh, like, the, the lines, like, ran halfway off the page, and I waited until the night before the deadline to start recording my auditions. So I didn't have time to, to reach out and say, hey, can I get the actual script for this? So I read for the other five brothers. And I think we did a second round of auditions for Jushimatsu. Uh, and then did a callback where we were in person. Because this was, this was pre-pandemic. Sure. We went in person and they brought in, this was a very unusual thing to do, especially for an anime, but they brought in me and uh, the actor that they had chosen for uh, Choromatsu. They brought in, um, I think the only one who wasn't there was Max Middleman who plays, uh, 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 oh, brain fart. <laughs> what, is, what is that Matsu brother's name? Why can't I remember Max's character's name? Uh, There's I Choru. Can't, I can't save you. <laughs> oh, this is going to kill me. Oh, oh, the internet can, though. Hold up. Why? It's, oh, it's right there on the tip of my tongue, and I can't find it. Anyway, he was the only one who wasn't there. Uh, and every single one of us that they, had, that they had brought in for that callback ended up booking the role. Um, they did end up replacing the actor who played Chor Totomatsu. Thank you, Rex. Okay. God, that was going to drive me crazy. I don't know why I couldn't remember. Um, yes, Totomatsu. That's that's Max's character. He was the only one who wasn't there that day, and it was just because he had a conflict. But uh, but the rest of us all came in, and uh, and they did end up replacing one of those actors later on. But everybody they brought in for that callback booked the role. 
So I don't think it was really a callback. It, it felt like it was more of like a, I don't know, the equivalent of what, what a screen test would be for on-camera actors or something. I don't know. It was, it was a very unusual set of, uh, uh, unusual way to do casting. Yeah, to say the least. All right, we got time for two more, guys. Uh, the next one's for my boy Chris. And uh, for, uh, apologies in advance. I'm probably going to butcher this. Uh, oh, Chris, why do you do this to me? Uh, hey, Kyle, what was it like voicing Kisaki Matsuribi in Alguna Zero? I feel like that anime is very underrated. Man, and uh, you are going to the well asking me about <laughs> that particular show. Uh, Matsuribi was a character that I, uh, yes, I played that character pretty early on in my anime career. Not, not so much early into me getting into voiceover, but me er early into anybody knowing who I was or, or caring about anything I did. Uh, <laughs> uh, and Matsuribi is a named character and it feels like he doesn't need to be a named character because he's a very small role in that show. Uh, I, and it was so long ago, I, I really don't remember much about the process. I, I'm sorry, I can't, uh, I can't give you much more than that, unfortunately. Well, we'll, we'll end it off with Aaron, who said, Hiya, Kyle. I can't wait for season two of Beastars. Um, who's your favorite Disney animal character that you would want uh, Tam or Kolo to hang out with and why? Ooh. Uh, so those would be my B stars characters. Yes. Which, uh, yeah, didn't didn't spend a whole lot of time working on that show. They're very very ancillary characters, so I don't know a whole lot about B stars to be totally honest. Um, seems like a really cool show. Seems like a fun fun tone, but I have not watched it. I haven't. And I'm gonna had time. twist it then. I'm gonna twist Aaron's question to be okay. What what animal Disney animal characters would you Kyle McCarley like to chill with? Let's assume oh, okay. you, can you can understand right. what I'm saying. All right, so Disney animal characters that I would like to hang out with. Well, the first one that has to come to my mind has got to be uh, Robin Hood from from the old school Robin Hood movie, uh, and it's not just because there is a pencil sketch hanging on the wall that a fan gave to my wife at a furry con she went to. <laughs> my my wife is the voice, is Caitlin Galt. She's the voice of Fenico in Agretzko. And, uh, and she told somebody at some point that her favorite Disney character was Robin Hood. Um, so, but, but I, like, that's also, I think that's also the case for me, at least as far as the animal characters go. Robin Hood, uh, I, and I got to play Robin Hood, not obviously the Fox version, uh, in, a, in a stage show when I was in college. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go with Robin Hood. Hell yeah. Perfect <laughs> choice. All right. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that's about all the time we got. So ladies and gentlemen, this has been episode 61 of Vision Con Live. Before we wrap things up, Kyle McCarley, any final thoughts to leave us on? Sage-like wisdom, anything at all? Uh, choose happiness. That's, that's my advice for you. <laughs> Couldn't say it better myself. Whatever, whatever you can do. to I, I know it's harder to do some days than others, but, but choose happiness. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been episode 61 of VisionCon Live. Thank you guys so much for watching. I, of course, am your host, Zach Wilson. But much more importantly, this has been my very special guest, Kyle McCarley. Make sure to check out all the links down in the description box below, guys. And until next time, always remember that life's better when you have friends to share it with.